Hello and welcome to another episode of The Reup. My name is Jason Delgado. It has been too long. There's been a lot going on, but a little bit of a break in some content that I was doing. So I wanted to hop on, start getting these reups back on again. You know, I always love doing these podcasts, just jumping on, talking about you know, the things that inspire me, motivate me as I'm going, you know, from the day job into the dream job of being a stand up comic, creator. <laughs> so I just, uh, I like to hop on here, talk about like how things are going, you know, and kind of break down you know, the events of the comedy world and sort of the journey up. But anyway, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I had my birthday a few days ago. I am 44 years young. Very exciting stuff. I am, uh, yeah, it feels like another year. It feels like a good year as far as, you know, I feel like I've made some good progress, been doing a lot of things to kind of motivate and better myself, better my craft. Uh, I'm getting better, I was better this year than I was last year at the things I'm trying to do. So, you know, it kind of works out. Um, and so I'm feeling good, you know. It's a, uh, it was a bit of a growing year for me. Uh, you know, I've had some, some kind of couple big losses recently. Uh, and so for me, a lot of motivating myself and keeping myself going and, and sort of progressing is based on how I did, you know, and I think a lot of people do that where you look, you look at, you know, this is where I was last year and now this is where I am this year. And, uh, and I think when you get past 40, it's tough because <laughs> you're just like, I was old and now I'm older. But I think for me, I've been like 40, 41. I, I think I was kind of transitioning into something. Uh, you know, learning more about like comedy and wanting to do comedy and transitioning from doing more filmmaking stuff and movie stuff to doing, you know, live stand up. And then like 41 to 42, I'm still kind of learning, you know, 43, you know, 42, 43 was pretty much pandemic. So it was a lot of just sitting at home, figuring stuff out. I had a great time. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed myself, ate great food, hung out. You know, it was funny because in New York now, there's this, you know, really bad smog. I don't think you could call it smog. Just air quality is terrible. It's it's like all red and it looks like almost like Mars. Like it's crazy being caused by these fires in Canada. And I was like, dude, that was like two weeks in California <laughs> during the pandemic where the whole sky was red. And it looked like Mars. It was crazy. And we were outside by the pool. And they're like, after like 20 minutes, like, dude, I can't breathe. I feel like I'm smoking a pack of cigarettes. I got to get in. <laughs> so, you know, we went in. But that that sort of nasty, smoggy air. I was like, oh, man, I thought that was exclusive to California. But, oh, no. Blame Canada. New York is hooked up now with the bad air quality. They actually had to cancel the Yankee game. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty crazy out there. But, yeah, that was like a lot of the pandemic was like that, that 41, 42... And even part of 43, you know, we were still kind of masked and not really doing too much. But like 43, I think it was like when the pandemic was ending, starting to kind of get back on the groove of things. I had a couple big projects and it didn't come through, but it, I learned a lot. You know, we wrote a whole television series and me and some friends and we wrote a pilot and we put together all these materials and a backstory. And I even edited together this like you know, cinematic trailer of what it could be. And they were like, no. <laughs> you know, and as a learning experience, one of the things that I'm finding is that a lot of times, you know, when you have these meetings with these studios and these production companies, you know, like Amazon or Netflix or whatever, they want to have what's called a pre-existing IP, which means it's something that's based on something. Like there's a video game and now we're basing a show on it or a book and now we're basing a series on it. And this is based on our minds. I mean, it's a little bit based on sort of biblical tales and stuff. But, I mean, it really doesn't have any, any you know, prior whatever banana. And so it was tough. And so dealing with that and kind of, you know, figuring, oh, you put all this work and then nothing turns out. But as it turns out, end of 43, kind of going into 44, you know, with certain events that happen and certain realizations and kind of refocusing of my own life and what's important, you know. I find like really it's just the learning part and the growing part and the what I'm taking away from it part that sort of sticks with. I'd love it for it to be the money part, but 
<laughs> you have a $20 million bagoo. But if it's not going to be that and it's not going to get sold and it's not going to move, I don't want to be in a position where I'm saying to myself, like, this was a waste of time. Because it's really not. I mean, I learned about how to make a show and how to craft a show and sort of what works and what doesn't. And then, like, reading a script out loud and recording it and then listening to it like it's kind of a radio show. I'm like, this sucks, this is good, and then this is how this works, and this is how that works, and studying shows. And I learned so much about the process, stuff that I want to do in, in future projects, you know, like podcasts and, you know, kind of cool stuff in the, in the coming months. But hopefully. <laughs> <clears throat> but it really was just, like, taking into account now where I'm at and sort of recently with, you know, doing stand-up and getting involved in new projects. And how it's sort of the startup again. Like, oh, we're going to start a new project or learn new jokes or come up with a new thing. I find that those years where you're kind of figuring out and not knowing what to do and trying stuff and working real hard. I find like now certain dividends are coming off of that. Where if I have to kind of start again, I'm getting to the basket faster, as they say. You know, like I'm like, oh, yeah, skip all this because that didn't work last time. We're going to get right to this part and kind of go forward. And, and developing sort of a system. I think so much of my own thinking of laziness. Because I always think to myself, oh, you're so lazy. You got to do more, you know. And I do so much, but I still think I'm not doing enough. And I guess that's an okay quality, but I don't like it. <laughs> I want to feel. But that idea of, you know, not feeling like you're doing enough or, or, or trying to like live up to something. I think comes from this pressure of being like, you know, if I start something, it's got to be a million dollar project. Or if I do this thing, it's got to sell on Netflix. Or it's got to be this, this, this hallmark watershed moment every time. And you start up, you do, and it doesn't work. And then everything kind of drops out. But I find that when it's like taking the will and, and, and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to try it again. I like doing these jokes. I like doing these little projects. Even if HBO didn't buy it, I'm going to push it again. Getting to that spot gets there much faster. Because you realize this is the stuff that doesn't work. This is the stuff that really works. Optimizing that sort of 2% of stuff that works and really pushing it. And so writing new jokes, coming up with new material, and writing scripts and stuff like that. So much of it, I think, is based on a system. Where you go like, this is how I start. This is how I put it together. This is how it comes out. And then this is what I do to sort of test it. Scientific theory, if you will, of baloney. <laughs> of nonsense. But this is kind of what, how it works, the creative process. And I think that that system in place has been really helping me. Having something that allows me to go, hey, if I need to start a new project, this is how I start. This is what I do next. This is how I test it. And this is how I conclude it. And I did it recently with like a joke video where I was, you know, it, it's, it's just so much writing. And, and, and that was the thing that I find in sort of the last couple years, I never really realized till this year, you have to do so much work. And I know everybody talks about like, so hard, there's so much work. Grinding, 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 never stop, no days off. I don't like to subscribe to that. But I think that I had a theory that I was, if I do this much, I can yield this much out of it. You know, if I write a page worth of stuff, I'll at least get like a minute worth of jokes out of it. No. <laughs> you have, I mean, for me at least, my currently, is it's just so much writing, writing of every idea, every thought, just a, a, a big splatter board of ideas. And then calling those ideas and then listening to them and then picking them out. Same thing with screenplays where you, you, know, you come up with a big idea and then you narrow it down where I want to start, where do I want to go. Great trick I learned recently. Get into a scene late, leave early. I think it's the same with comedy. <laughs> you know, get in kind of like where the audience is a little catching up and leave before they tire. And, and I find that with screenplay writing, that's something I noticed because I would start, you know, Sally walks into the coffee shop. Hey, how's it going, John? John. Hey, how's it going, Sally? It's like, start with Sally and John are across from each other and they're talking about where they buried the body. <laughs> you know, have the audience come in like John and Sally are talking and they look nervous at a coffee shop. I don't know where he buried the body. And then we're moving. I don't need to see how they met, how she walked in. And that sort of cutting to the chase part 
that's new for me because I would read this and I'd be like, I'm bored. And it's because the fun stuff's happening over here. Same thing with jokes. I find like I would write these jokes where I'd set all this stuff up and then I'd go like digga, 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 and then have a punchline joke. But I'm like, all that sort of rigmarole is tiring out the ear and, and you want to get to the joke faster, the punchline faster, as fast as you can. And those little tricks where you go, you know, why isn't this working? And, and that's one example. Just get in earlier or get in later and leave earlier. And, and learning those little systematic things, I find like this year, it's really kind of coming to fruition. I, I'm, I'm noticing that sort of how I in, am learning to do things versus how I'm enjoying things. Because I'm enjoying stuff differently than learning how to do it. Like, for example, I have a note here about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I haven't finished it yet, but I think it's a phenomenal game. If you play Nintendo or you play any kind of games, Zelda's very fun. But the point of Zelda is that it's so wide. There's so many things to do. And you can get from this point to this point to this point to this point and just beat the game. Or you can kind of roam around, learn new things, do little side quests, blah, 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 blah. But when you, if you just go from point to point to point to point, sometimes you're underpowered. Sometimes you miss a lot of the experience. Sometimes you don't learn some of the mechanics. I find like I was just kind of roaming around doing stuff aimlessly and I had to come up with this mechanic and I go oh I didn't even know you could do that then I get to a boss battle and that comes into play would have never known that how I just if had I just not roamed around you know tried stuff did stuff not just going so goal oriented goal oriented point to point to point and I think sometimes with you know wanting to do this stuff where you're out here on the road trying to be somebody you feel like everything has to be as efficient as possible <laughs> and I think I am learning that sometimes those side missions and those side quests and those little roams are good. They're good for the, the spirit, the mind. We don't feel the pressure. But also you pick stuff up from it. And so I find like this year having done all those things and, and that, that felt like waste of time don't feel like waste of time anymore because now I feel like, oh, now if I'm starting again new, I got to this point really fast. And so maybe it'll progress faster and then I'll learn to the next one. Point of this whole podcast is don't give up. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I just, I wanted to just rant and rave about sort of, you know, that creative process and sometimes the ebbs and flows of how I feel because that's what's kind of been, you know, recent for me. You know, dealing with these sort of stop points in life, whether it be personal or professional, that just feel like, man, where is this coming from? I worked so hard. I did all these things. All this stuff is supposed to come into play. And now, you know, they say uh, anger is disappointed hope. And so, like, I had this hope, and it doesn't come through, and I feel like it was a waste. But now I don't, because just one step away, if you just think, I'm going to give it one more shot. Now that I'm kind of back in the game doing the things, I'm like, oh, man, all that sort of wasted time is coming into play, because I can, I'm learning, you know, these little tricks and how to make stuff work faster and how to get more out of the time I'm using. And also have better expectations. It takes a lot of work to get a very little thing. So don't feel bad about the lot of work because the little thing's kind of worth it, you know, if it's worth it. The point of this whole podcast is don't give up. <laughs> but this was a lot of fun. I'm glad if you made it this far and you're listening. I really, really appreciate it. And I've been so grateful to kind of have people watching the support videos and watching the stand-up comedy and doing all these things. And so I want to kind of do more of these re-ups where I talk about sort of me, you know, personally dealing with these little challenges and hopefully these little tips and tricks or whatever will help other people going through their thing. If you're trying to be an artist, you're trying to be a designer, you're trying to be somebody, you know, everybody goes through it. You're not alone. You are not alone. I am here with you. <laughs> this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Delgado. This has been The Re-Up. We'll see you next week. We're going to do this weekly. Motivate each other. Help each other. Be strong. Be good. Keep it going. Let's go. Thanks for joining me.